This is the 27th of September of 2020, and today's study is Luke chapter 9. First, we're going to pray, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I ask you to put every one of us in the bubble of protection, Father, and prepare our hearts for your word. Let only your word go out what you want to say. Um, Holy Spirit, speak. That's my prayer. Touch my eyes and my eyesight and my understanding, Father. In Jesus' name, upload this video quickly with no hiccups. Amen. Okay, we're going to go to Luke chapter 9. When he called his 12 disciples together and gave them power and authority over all uh, devils and to cure diseases, and he sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. And he said unto them, Take nothing for your journey, neither staves nor script neither bread neither money neither have two coats apiece and whatsoever house ye enter into uh there abide and thence depart and whosoever sh uh, will not receive you when ye go out of that city shake off the very dust from your feet for a testimony against them and they departed and went through the towns preaching the gospel and healing everywhere now herod the tetriarch heard of all the things that uh, was done by him and he was perplexed because that it was said of some that John was raised from the dead um, and some that Elias had appeared and of others that one of the old prophets was arisen again and Herod said John I have beheaded but who is this of whom I hear such things and he desired to see him and the apostles when they were returned told him all that they had done and he took them and went aside privately into a desert place belonging to uh, the city called Bethsaida and the people when they knew it they followed him and received and he received them and spake unto them of the kingdom of God and healed them that had need of healing and when the day began to wear away then came the twelve and said unto him, Send the multitude away, that they may go into the towns and countryside, round about and lodge, and give visuals, uh, for we are in a desert place. But he said unto them, Give, the, give ye them to eat. And they said, to, uh, they said, We have no more but five loaves and two fishes, except we should go and buy meat for all these people. For they were about five thousand men. And he said to his disciples, Make them all sit down by fifties and a company. Uh, and they did so and made them all sit down. And then he took the five loaves and the two fishes and looking up to heaven, he blessed them and break and gave to the disciples to set before the multitude. And they did eat and were all filled. And there was taken up from, of fragments that remain to them twelve baskets. And it came to pass as he was alone praying, the disciples were with him. And he asked them saying, whom say um, the people that I am and he answered uh, he answered John the Baptist some say Elias and others say uh, one of the old prophets is risen again and he said unto them but whom say ye that I am Peter answering and said the Christ of God and he straightly charged them and commanded them to tell no man that thing saying the son of man must suffer many things and be rejected of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be slain and be raised the third day and he said um, to them all if any man will come after me let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me well whosoever will save his life shall lose it but whosoever will lose his life for my sake the same shall save it for what is a man advantaged if he gain the whole world and lose himself, or be cast away? For whosoever shall be ashamed of me and of my words, of him shall I, the Son of Man be ashamed, when he shall come in his own glory, and in his Father's, and of the holy angels. Uh, but I tell you of a truth, um, there be some standing here which shall not taste of death till they see the kingdom of God. And it came to pass about in an, in, in eight days after these sayings, uh, uh, he took Peter and John and James and went up into a mountain to pray. And as he prayed, um, his, the fashion of his countenance was altered and his raiment was white and glistening. And behold, there talked with him two men, which were Moses and Elias, who, who appeared in glory and spake of his deceased, I cease. Uh, which he should accomplish in Jerusalem. 
and but Peter and they that were with him were heavy with sleep and when they were awake um, they saw his glory and the two men that stood with him and it came to pass as they departed from him Peter said unto Jesus master it is good for us to be here and to let let us make uh, uh, three, tabernacles, three, three tabernacles, one for thee, one for Moses, and one for Elias, not knowing what he said. While he thus spake, there came a cloud and overshadowed them, and they feared as they entered in, into the cloud. And there came a voice out of the cloud, saying, This is my beloved son, hear him. And then the voice was passed. Uh, Jesus was found alone, and they kept it close and told no man in those days of any of those things which they had seen and it came to pass that on the next day when they were come down from the hill uh, much people met him and behold a man of the company cried out saying master I, I beseech you look upon my son for he is mine only child and lo a spirit taketh him and he, and he suddenly crieth out and it teareth him and he, he foameth again and bruising him, hardly depart from him. Uh, and I besought thy disciples to cast him out, and they could not. And Jesus answering said, O faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I um, be with you and suffer you? Bring thy son hither. And as he was yet a coming, the devil threw him down and tear him. And uh, Jesus rebuked the unclean spirit and healed the child and delivered him again to his father. And they were all amazed at the mighty power of God. But while they wondered every one at all these things which Jesus uh, did, he saith unto his disciples, let these, see, let these sayings sink down into your ears, for the Son of Man shall be delivered into the hands of men. But they understood not the saying, and it was hid from them that they perceived it not. And they feared to ask him of that saying. And when there arose a reasoning among them, which of them should be greatest Jesus perceiving the thought of their heart took a child and set him by him and said unto them whosoever shall uh, receive this child in my name receiveth me whosoever shall receive me receiveth him that sent me for he that is least among you all the same shall be great and John answering and said, Master, we saw one casting out devils in thy name, and we forbade him, because he followeth not with us. And Jesus said unto him, Forbid him not, for he it is not against me, against us, is for us. And it came to pass, when the time was come that he should be received up, he steadfastly set his face to go to Jerusalem. Uh, and sent messengers before his face, and they went and entered into a village of the Samaritans to make ready for him. And they did not receive him because his face was set to us as though he would go to Jerusalem. And when his disciples James and John saw this, they said, Lord, wilt thou that we, condemn, we uh, command fire to come down from heaven and consume them, even as Elias did? But he turned and rebuked them and said, Ye know not what manner of spirit ye are of. For the Son of Man is not um, come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. And they went to another village. And it came to pass that as they went in the, uh, the certain, or then the way, a certain man said unto him, Lord, I will follow thee whithersoever thou goest. And Jesus said unto him, Boxes of holes and the birds of the air have nests. But the Son of Man has not where to lay his head. And he said unto another, Follow me. But he said, Lord, suffer me first to go and bury my father. And Jesus said unto him, Let the dead bury their dead, and go thou uh, and preach the kingdom of God. And another also said, Lord, I will follow thee, but let me first go and bid them farewell, which are at my home, my home and at my house. And Jesus said unto him, No man having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. Now, I might have to do this on two videos. I understand that. All right. Okay, so see, I see in Luke chapter 9, verse 1 to 6, we see authority. 
We see power. We see power to preach the truth and to spread the gospel. Okay? Uh, let's see, it was given. And we see that it was given to believers, not just the 12 disciples, but to the believers. So let's look at scripture, uh, scripture to back this up. Okay? Luke chapter 9, verse 1. Then, the, then he called his disciples together and gave them power and authority over all devils and to cure diseases. All right, and then John chapter 16, verse 7 to 16. John 16, 7 to 16. John 7, see, John 16, 7 to 16. John 16. 7 to 16. Nevertheless, I tell you a truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go uh, not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. And when he is come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness, and of judgment, of sin because they believe not on me, of righteousness because I go to my Father and ye see me no more, of judgment because the prince of this world is judged. I, I have yet many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. Howbeit when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear that he speak that shall he speak and he will show you things to come he will show you things to come keep that in mind um, he, he shall glorify me for he shall receive of mine and shall show it unto you and all things that the father has are mine Therefore said I that he shall take of mine and shall show it unto you. A little while and ye see me not, ye shall see me not. And again a little while and ye shall see me because I go to the Father. Okay, then let's look at Matthew chapter 28 verse 19 and 20. Matthew... Twenty-eight. 19 and 20. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. And let's look at one more. Romans chapter 1 verse 16. Romans. Thank you, Holy Spirit. 1 and then verse 16. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first, and then also to the Greek. Not everyone that believeth is saved. Call upon him. So we're going to read again Luke chapter 9, verse 3 to, 3 to 16. Luke chapter 9, 3 to 16. Then he called his twelve disciples together and gave them power and authority over all devils to cure diseases and to cure diseases. And he sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. And he said unto them, Take uh, nothing for your journey, neither staves, nor, nor script, neither bread, neither money, ne neither have two coats apiece, and whatsoever house ye enter into there abide um into let's see uh was a house ye enter into there abide and then depart and whosoever will not receive you when you go out of that city shake off the very dust from your feet for a testimony against them and they departed and went through the towns preaching uh, the gospel and healing everywhere now here at the tetrarch heard of all these that was done by him and he was perplexed because that it was said of some that John was risen from the dead and of some that Elias had appeared and of others 
that one of the old prophets uh, ha oh, see, was risen again. And Herod said, John have I beheaded, but who is this of whom uh, I hear such things? And he desired to see him. And the apostles, when they were returning, told him all that they had done, and he took them uh, and went aside privately into a desert place um, belonging to the city called Bethesda. And the people, when they knew it, uh, followed him, and, re and he received them and spake unto them uh, of the kingdom of God and healed them uh, that had need of it. And when the day began to wear away, then came the twelve uh, and said unto him, Send the multitude away that they may go into the towns and countries round about and lodge and get visuals, uh, for we are here in a desert place. But he said unto them, Ye, I say, give them, give ye them to eat. And they said, We have no more but five loaves and two fishes, except we should go and buy meat for all these people. For they were about five thousand, and he said to his disciples, Make them sit down by fifties in a company. And when they did so, um, and, and made them all sit down, then he took um, the five loaves and the two fishes, and looking up to heaven, he blessed them and break and gave them to his disciples to set before the multitude. All right, here's a question here. Okay, how were they able to, how were these ministers or the disciples okay supposed to live and then we're going to explore this so think and think about that for a minute how are they supposed to live they out there and they have no script uh no money purse only have one coat whatever they wear not to take anything else good question okay so the disciples are sent to the towns and cities of judea the only things that they could take like i said uh was what they wore was what they wore, right? So because where those accepted them, they were accept. So the reason was wherever they went in, whatever household they went in, they were to stay, and they were stay there until they left that city or that town, and they were to uh, rely totally on God to protect them and to to uh, give them what their needs, give them the supplies that they need, right? Um, so the Lord is the fountain of power and authority. And it says that in Romans 14, 11 to 12. Let's go over here. Romans 14, 11 and 12. Romans 14. Thank you, Holy Spirit. 11 and 12. For it is written, as I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. So then every one of us shall give an account of himself to God. Meaning we better look to him, keep our focus on Christ, and and just rely and just believe, have faith that he will take care of you. Okay? So uh, when truth and love goes with you, or the disciples, they were ministers also at this point, and still the gospel is rejected and despised, it leaves men without excuse. Now that's, that's from, uh, let's go look, look at that again, uh, Luke chapter 9 verse 5. Let's look at that for another minute. And whosoever will not receive you when you go out of that city, shake off the very dust from your feet for a testimony against them. Okay? So if they don't, they have no excuse. No excuse. And let's look at uh, John chapter 15, verse 22. John 15, verse 22. See, I always back up scripture with scripture. That's what's so great about Bible studies. 15, 15, uh, 1522. If I had not come and spoken unto them, they had not had sin. But now they have no cloak for their sin. It's also Romans 1, 20, 1 and then verse 20. Um, so then their denial of Christ is a refusal of God himself. This only leaves condemnation. Just like Paul said, if they don't accept you, then they're condemned already. They don't believe Christ in Christ or believe Christ, they're condemned already. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, for that. And let's look at that. Romans 1, 28. 
Romans chapter 1. Uh, verse 28. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. See, he's going to leave you alone and let you to your own, uh, to your own destruction. You keep calling, calling, calling. Holy Spirit will keep coming. Well, you can, de you can deny him and turn aside so many times. So let's also look what he does for us, John 3, 15 to 21. John 3, uh, 15 to 21. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is a condemnation that the light is come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For every one that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. And he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest, that they are wrought in God. Okay, so we look at uh, verse, let's go back to Luke 9. I'm trying to kind of keep track of time here. And then verse 10, let's read 9 and then verse 10 again. And the apostles, when they returned, told him all the things he had done. And he took them and went aside into a place, a desert place belonging to the city called Bethsaida. Let's look at uh, verse 18. And it came to pass as he was alone praying, his disciples were with him and he and he asked them, saying, uh, whom say the, uh, the people that I am. Now, what you want to see out of this is both these times he was praying. Both these times he's praying. Okay, it, it shows us that over and over again that, that prayer, solitude, is to be a priority. Jesus always made prayer and solitude with his Father a priority. Notice that. That's why those two scriptures are important there. Okay. Um, so I, you know, I discovered, uh, in fact, in, I, in Luke, Luke, uh, not in Luke chapter eight, I, uh, explained this thoroughly. So we're, we're not going to go too much into that. I just wanted you to, to know that once again, he's showing us that prayer is an extreme priority for him. Then Luke nine twenty three. what's this mean? Let's explore. Let's look at nine twenty three. And he said unto them all, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. Now I wanted to know what this meant. Okay. So so in the see, first of all, the Arabic version, all believers, okay, not just to disciples, okay, daily we must pick up our cross and follow Christ Jesus. In most Bible versions, the word daily has emphasis placed on it. This means that uh, afflictions, trials, persecutions of some sort are to be expected every day as believers. See, because we know that Satan does not like us. In fact, he hates the human race because we have authority over him or them. We have authority over them and they didn't, we didn't want to bow to us. He didn't want to help us. He wanted all the glory for himself. See, that's another story. That's another uh, story. That is another story, but that's another study. So, um, that's what that means. So, what does, what does it mean to deny yourself and pick up your cross, okay? First, 
This reminds me of John chapter 13, 30, and we're going to go to that in a minute. Self-denial, as used in this verse, means more than just uh, giving up worldly things, like worldly pleasures, okay? Uh, it, it means literally disowning and rejecting our natural man. Um, to the original hearers of this statement, it meant an instrument of execution. To follow Jesus, we must die. And they knew that. They knew that to take up your cross and die daily, it meant to those, those early believers, execution. They had to execute their self. They had to execute everything that um, they put before Christ. Because Christ has to be number one. And let's look at that John chapter 3, verse 30 real fast. John chapter 3 and verse 30. He must increase, but I must decrease. And that's what he expects out of us. He wants a relationship with us. He wants you to pray to Father God in his name. He wants you to pray in tongues. He wants you to pray for others. He wants you to study his word. He wants you to keep seeking his kingdom because his kingdom in Matthew 6 and then verse 33, seek ye, kingdom, seek ye the kingdom of God first and then all these things will be added to it. And the original text says to continually ask, continually seek, continually knock until you get your result. See, that's what it means to the from the original language here. So think about that. In other words, to follow Jesus Christ... Um, die to our, our own desires, wills, wants, wishes, ambitions, goals, pride, and what we think that we have as our right to. Right? We must, we must die to them. So to the flesh, this seems as a great sacrifice, but to Jesus, it is no sacrifice at all. We see in Luke 9, 24 and 20 to 26, he is rewarding us for being faithful. Let's look at Luke 9, 24 to 26. 24 to 26. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it, but whosoever um, will lose his life for my sake, the same shall save it. For what is a man advantaged if he gain the whole world and lose himself or be cast away? For whosoever shall be ashamed of me and of my words, of him shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he shall come in his own glory and in his Father's and in the holy angels. See? So truly, by trying to hang out and to hang on, right, to what is ours and what we think we have, what we think is ours, what we think is our right, right? We only delay the inevitable because Christ has to be number one. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Okay? So the inevitable is obvious. Okay? We're going to die. One day we'll, we'll, we'll lay this body down. His body will cease to, cease to be. And our spirit will go upward to Father God to have to have eternal life with Him, with our Creator, or down to hell, which is separation, eternal separation from our Creator. I'm trying to look at the time there. Okay. Well, let's look at uh, Hebrews chapter 9, verse 27. Hebrews 9, and then verse 27. And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment. See? So like I said, I'm explaining scripture with scripture. Okay, so what's great, right? What's great? What's great beyond great is when we choose Christ Jesus, we are given the promise he will raise us. Okay, and that's in 2 Timothy 2, 10-13. Second Timothy chapter two, verse ten to thirteen. Second Timothy two, ten to thirteen. Therefore, I endure all things for the elect's sake, that they may also obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. It is a faithful saying: For if we be dead with him, we shall also live with him. If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, we, he also will deny us. If we believe not, yet he abideth faithful, he cannot deny himself. See? So if we deny him at any point, 
after we have accepted him, which means that we have accept, we have salvation at that point, if we deny Christ, then we don't have salvation at that point. Okay, let's see. I will keep going on on the second version, because this is the 70. This is uh, 30. So look for Luke chapter 9, video 2.